Over the last couple of weeks, we've had some big earnings. And like usual, the obsession is with the big tech earnings. But there's been a few companies that went under the radar that no one's talking about that had good earnings. And two of these I hold in my portfolio. And of course, these are REITs that I hold. They're Vici and Realty Income. And I think now that this talk of possible rate decreases is happening, these companies will start to get a little bit more attention, especially when those rate cuts hit. But over the last couple of years, in the high interest rate environment, these uh, stocks, these investments have been hit hard and they've been suppressed. And that was the time to accumulate shares, which I did. I was, I was so happy that I really bulked up my shares, my allocation of my portfolio in the REITs that I hold. I will show you that portfolio at the end. And this opportunity, a lot of people did not take because usually when there's fear, that's when people shy away from those areas, those investments. And when there's hype and, and, and FOMO and hyper-focused attention on certain stocks that are already high in valuation, investors tend to buy those. It's a, it's a phenomenon that won't make you money. But if you look at quality companies when the fear hits, and if it's due to a market-wide fear, not company-specific fear, those are the ones to buy. So with Realty Income, we're going to start with them. We're going to see some very solid financials. This company is dependable. It provides dependable returns. It's not a company that will excite you, but they won't make you sad either. So adjusted funds from operations is increasing. Now that is used by investors to measure a real estate company's cash flows generated by operations. You think of companies and the free cash flow. Well, with REITs, you want to look at adjusted funds from operations. So the fact that this is growing is a very positive sign. This shows us that its dividend is dependable. It's becoming more dependable. And this company's future looks bright. Revenue's going up. We see that long-term debt is going up, but with REITs, they run on leverage. So you can't look at this as a negative. Uh, this is just how they operate, but it did hold steady from last quarter to this quarter. And net income is going up. It bounced back big from last quarter. And AFFO per common share is also increasing. This is excellent to see. Now with Realty Income, they have a portfolio of 15,450 properties in all 50 U.S. states, if you didn't know that, yes, they're in every single state. So they're in your state if you're watching this from the U.S. They're also in the U.K. and six other countries in Europe. This company also has increased their dividend over the last 29 years, a stellar record. It's a passive income investment you do not have to worry much about. They also hold a 98.8% occupancy with all of their properties. So Realty Income really is the dependable investment in your portfolio. It's the one that is stable. So I think it does earn a spot in your portfolio. It just is dependent on you how big of an allocation you want it. But for me, I will show you that at the end, how much Realty Income makes up in my portfolio. But let's first talk about Vici. Now, Vici is dependable, but it's a little more risky because it has more concentration into experiential properties and mainly on the Vegas Strip. But with that said, there is an excitement factor with Vici because I think there's some huge growth potential for its future, and it's proven itself. Look at these financials. Growing adjusted funds from operation, growing revenue, long-term debt has been holding steady for almost a year now, but again, they operate on leverage, so not a big deal. You, you gotta look at other factors when looking at their debt, uh, like we are now, so net income is also growing. So those things kind of support the way that it operates off of leverage to grow, kind of depends on leverage to grow, shall I say. And of course, their AFFO per common share is growing rapidly. This is fantastic, and not only that, but Vici raised their AFFO guidance. Now that's the excitement that I'm looking for. So some cool things with Vici that I don't think a lot of people know. The company announced that it will provide up to 700 million of capital in the Venetian Resort Las Vegas for extensive reinvestment projects through its partner property growth fund strategy. Now I love this strategy. I think it is brilliant. Uh, so the Venetian capital investment is compromised of 400 million expected to be drawn in 2024 this year, and the remaining 300 will be drawn in 2026. So you might be wondering, how do they get this capital back? You just don't give money away and don't get it in return with some interest, right? Well, annual rent under the existing Venetian 
resort lease increases commencing on the first day of the quarterly of the quarter immediately following each capital funding at a 7.25% yield. The incremental Venetian rent will begin escalating annually at 2% on March 1st, 2029 and commencing on March 1st, 2031. Basically, they're raising the rent to pay themselves back. Vici is raising the rent. I think that is so smart. They're giving money to the Venetian to say, hey, fix up the property, which makes it more attractive, which makes it be one of those properties that stands out. So they'll get the business. Meanwhile, they get to collect that money back with interest. So that is brilliant. I love that. So the other thing they do is they do uh, provide loans. They recently did that to another property. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's basically a mezzanine a loan, which is a hybrid of debt and equity financing that gives the lender the right to convert the debt to an equity interest in the company in case of a default. So there's some protection there. So Vici is offering capital in different ways that improves the property that sits on the land it owns. This is an excellent way to ensure Vici stays in control while increasing the value of its properties, creating a more solid and pre predictable future of success for these properties. I, I think that's just brilliant. So REITs have been ignored, like I said, because they dipped with the high interest rate environment. And I have been promoting for the last couple of years, if you've been watching this channel, that it is time to accumulate shares. It has been time, shall I say. It's kind of starting to run out. And someday the interest rate environment will swing back in the REITs favor. And it looks like that might be around the corner. The Fed might be cutting the rate by the end of this year, the first uh, rate decrease or sooner possibly dependent on if they feel it's needed m more as an emergency act than just per their typical meetings where they make these decisions. And you will see here, year to date, I'm not taking this out anymore, I just wanna show you that Vici has been going down, but recently over the last month with that hope of the Fed rate decrease, in one month it's up almost 14%. That is phenomenal. That is what I was trying to say. When these rates get cut, these REITs are going to benefit, and they're already showing that with just the talk about rates being decreased. Same goes for realty income. It's up almost 15% in the last month. Both these companies are growing financially. They're healthy, and with the rates being cut in the future, that's just going to propel these stocks up, and it's going to make us money. And so I'm so happy that I put in a lot of my capital towards the real estate sector, specifically in Realty Income and Vici, and you'll see that here in a minute. But I do want to talk about one of the stocks in my portfolio that just released earnings and it didn't go well. And that's the benefit of this channel. I share the good and the bad. And this one has been bad. That's Warner Bros. Discovery. So the stock reported a 9.1 billion write down on its TV networks and missed analyst estimates on revenue. So the loss per share came in at 36 cents versus an expected 22 cents. The revenue came in at 9.7 billion versus 10.07 billion expected. So revenue for Warner Bros. Discovery's TV networks, which includes TBS, TNT, Discovery, and TLC was down 8%, but they did add 3.6 million subscribers to max bringing its total streaming customers to 103.3 million. So that's very strong. I will say that this is a bright spot. And you have to note though that Max did launch in new international markets during this last earnings quarter. And so it's showing to be helpful and we'll just see how helpful it is over the next few earnings because I think that's when it will really be tested, right? You're new to a market, you're gonna get people that join, but will they stay? That is key. And then direct to consumer streaming, which is the max, it even though they added, they still had a decrease of 5% in their revenue. Advertising did go up 99%, and that they said that that was driven by higher domestic engagement on max, the ad supported subscriber growth, um, that tier that many of us don't like, but it is cheap enough where we'll keep it right there without paying the premium to get rid of commercials. In fact, I just got a notice, um, some kind of little down about this, but I'm not going to cancel. But with Netflix, they're saying, because I'm on an old plan, they're going to push me onto the ad plan, which will cut my rate that I'm paying now, but then I have ads. So it's giving me an option to upgrade or stay with the ads, which means they make money either way, because they're going to make more off of me if I do the ad tier from advertisement revenue, or they're going to make more for me if I say, I don't want those 
ads, so I'm going to pay even more than I'm paying now. So it's a smart move. I can't blame them for doing it. I don't like it. But if you're an investor in Netflix, then this is something that will continuously increase their revenues. So then we get to my portfolio. We'll see here, I'm up 19%. Um, this portfolio has been above 20% for a while, so we're seeing it being hit a little bit. Yes, tech stocks have been going down. Uh, there's talk of a possible recession now, so there's been some fear in the market. But you will see here with my REITs, they're on the kind of bottom right. This is the sector that I have the most money allocated to. Vici makes up 17.27% of my portfolio, and Realty Income makes up 6.74%. So I again, took advantage when these companies were being hit, investors were fearful. I knew they were quality companies and that it was a sector wide fear with the high interest rate environment, not the company specific fear to Vici and Realty Income. So I bulked it up. I'm happy I did. And now Vici's in the green for me, 7% and Realty Income's almost 10% in the green. These were in the red for me for a while, like 5%. So they swung up into the green, makes me very happy. But then to the left there, you see Warner Bros. Discovery in the communication services sector. It's down for me almost 18%. It's a smaller allocation, luckily. It's 2.25%. But nonetheless, it's still a loss. This has been a failure of mine, kind of, because I held AT&T. And if you watch my last couple of videos, I sold a lot of my losing stocks because there was some positive movement with them. I took advantage of that. I'm glad I did. But when I held AT&T, when I bought them originally, they spun off the Warner Bros. Discovery component. That's how I got this. So it's not like I bought it. It was a spinoff, but I did keep it. So I probably should have sold a long time ago. So what do I plan to do now with my Warner Bros.? Well, I do plan on keeping it for a while. Seeing that streaming growth, I am curious to see what happens there. Uh, the fact that they are struggling in other areas and losing rights to some of their sports content is not a positive. So I think that this one... Uh, it's a big risk for me, but I am going to hold for at least another earnings or two and see what happens. With that said, are REITs still an opportunity? Well, yes, I still think they are an opportunity, but just not a still, if that makes sense. Vici was a still below 30, Realty Income below 55 per share. Uh, so I want to know, do you hold Realty Income or Vici? I think these are high quality REITs. I'm glad I took advantage of them while they were struggling due to market-wide fears and not company-specific fears. But as you saw financially, these two are thriving and growing. And what other REITs are you bullish on that you think are of high quality? Now, I want to end with this. There's a lot of fear, a lot of talk with the recession. Uh, we had a big dip one day, but then a pretty big recovery the next. So it's very volatile right now. But just keep in mind that over the past 10 years, it has dropped 5% or more 17 times. But in the last 10 years, the stock market is up 234%. Keep your eye on the prize, invest in those quality stocks, and you'll be fine. So we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance. Have a great day.